about. Okay, so first thing is that I need to review some stuff with you. So if I have <coughs> this, if I have V1 equal to 1, 2, V2 equal to minus one one okay and b <coughs> is v1 v2 and x let's say x is equal to one five do you guys remember this notation Anybody remember this notation? Excuse me, Professor. Uh, I, I have one question. Yes. Uh, I was thinking today we're going to have a test, and I was waiting in Canvas, and I didn't get any notification. Is it supposed it's to be? It's next Wednesday. It's next Wednesday. Oh, next Wednesday. Oh, OK. Yeah. It, it's next Wednesday. It's not today. Oh, sure. So next Wednesday, the test <coughs> will open at 12.45. Okay, uh, in campus. Okay, oh. in campus, not in my math lab. In campus, okay. and then you need to go in there. Then the test will be posted on on campus uh, as an assignment. Okay, you go in there. There's a bunch of questions you need to show work, and you need to answer them. Okay, at the end, uh, you need to. At the end, you need to take pictures uh, of your answers or PDF file, whatever, and then submit it. I believe in the study guide, did I say I give you 90 minutes? Yeah, yeah, it says until 2. 2.15, yeah. Yeah, 2.15. Until 2.15, yeah. So that's what happened with the test. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. No problem, yeah, yeah. Today is not the test. <coughs> Anybody remember this notation? <coughs> that is the coordinate of x with respect to this basis b. Anybody remember this? We have some homework on that before. Yes, no? How do I compute this? How do I find this? I, I need to use this result later, so I'm going to just talk about it a little bit now. OK? Yeah. Can you write x as a linear combination of v1 and v2? x. I guess. Yes, very good. Why x equal to c1, v1, plus c2, v2, and solve for c1, c2. OK? So basically, what you are doing is that. <coughs> x is equal to v1, v2 times c1, c2. And this c1, c2 is, is this. This c1, c2 is my new coordinate system. OK? So c1, c2 is actually if this matrix, you call this P, then <coughs> X, so this guy here, <coughs> this guy here is actually uh, V1, V2 inverse of X, okay, of P inverse. 
Okay. So the new basis is equal to x times p inverse on this left. Okay, where p is p is the matrix formed by putting these vectors together. Okay. Okay, bear this in mind because I will have to erase it. I don't have a lot of wall space. Okay, so we are going to use this result a little bit later. And then uh, I want to talk slightly a little bit about differential equation in case you haven't done differential equation for a long time. Uh, dy dx equal to What, what function whose derivative is equal to itself? Does anybody know a function? Whose constant. Yes. Constant. Oh. Yeah. E x. Constant will go to zero. Okay. After you take the derivative, e to the x. <coughs> Are there any other functions other than this one? How about two times e to the power x? Does it work? Yes. How about five times e to the power x? Does it work? Five times e to the power x. Okay, so in general, <coughs> the solution is, uh, in general, the solution is, C times e to the power x. Okay. For us, for us, we are talking about uh, instead of x, we are talking about t. Today, you have the time. The independent variable is time. So this will be what, uh, y equal to, oh, actually, I would like to change it to this. <coughs> dx dt equal to x. Then this x will be g times g to the power t. Is, is it okay? I mean, this is just another form of this, changing the name of the variable. So if I have something like this, how about this? What do you think the answer is? If you have taken, if you are taking differential equation or you still remember your calculus two, this would, this stuff are all pretty trivial to you. So what is the answer here? Anyone? The derivative of function is two times itself. It's still re related to the exponential function. Think about the chain rule. Anyone? Just talking about x squared? Mm -hmm. uh, this is not x squared. I'm not sure what it would be e to the power. It's also an exponential function. But you want to be two times itself. OK, how about this? d dt e to the power 2t. What would that mean? E to the two e to the two t. There's a constant two in the front, right? Yes. Okay. So how about this? What do you think the answer is? Oh, sorry, I have a, I have a constant here too. Two t. Okay, two times constant. Okay. Because you can be any constant doesn't change that. So what do you think this is? X equal to lambda c. Lambda c. 
we will not go through this. Okay, so we need this result, okay? We need this result today. We also need this thing today, uh, this stuff. Uh, any questions so far? Is there a reason you're not? Oh, let's writing? move to here. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is there a reason you're not writing the differential equations in standard form? Huh? Is there a reason why you are not writing the differential equations in standard form? What do you mean? Like uh, dx dt minus 2x equal to 0. Oh, I see. Um, <laughs> I guess. There is, there is a reason, I think, yeah. It's just that because I'm going to do system of equation, okay? Well, you, you will see why later, probably, Matthew, okay? All right, so I'm going to just keep going. <coughs> okay, I, I just want to establish this, basically. I said it's just too or bad there. So, so you guys okay with this, right? Better not. I don't need that line. Is, is it okay? I'm sorry I confused you. I made some mistake. Is, is it okay here? This is the solution to this? Yes, that's okay. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, I messed up. I put the extra line under there. But even though it doesn't hurt, but that's not good. This is the right thing to do. A constant times e to the power of power lambda t. Okay. Because if you differentiate this, you will take the lambda down here, and then you will have lambda. OK, so I'm going to just keep going. Uh, so if I have a system of equation, okay, you have x1 as a function of time, x2 as a function of time, and then I have two equations. Now these two equations, they don't have interaction with each other, okay? They do not interact with each other. <coughs> so the answer is pretty simple. <coughs> so the solution is going to be uh, like this x1 t will be equal to c1 e to the power 3t x2 t equal to c2 e to the power minus 5t. You guys agree with that, hopefully. Are we okay? So now I have another um, example where these guys are coupled together, okay? X1 prime T is minus 1.5 X1 T plus 0 0.5 x2 prime t is equal to x1 t minus x2 t. Okay, so this is a system of two equations. Okay, two differential equations. But they are coupled in the sense that this x1 depends on the x2, x2 here depends on the x1. It's kind of messed up. Okay. And we want to decouple them. Okay, the goal is to decouple. So these are coupled together. So the goal is to decouple. The 
セスとか。優先。バーグプロバイセリー。Uh, some of you are taking, some of you are taking 275 now. Some of you have taken 275 recently. We have, an, we have some method of solving this using differential operator. Okay, and turn this into a second order equation and so on. Okay. But here, the way that we're going to do this is using linear. Okay, so we write this like this. Okay, do you agree that this one can be written like this? Yes. Very good, thank you. <laughs> Now, this whole thing. We're going to call this x, t. Okay. This bar here,、uh, this arrow here means it's a vector. It's a vector. But the vector, the entries are functions. So this one will become x prime t. Okay, as a vector. And this is my matrix A. And I am going to diagonalize A.、Uh, later on, you will see why the diagonalization helps. Okay. So let's just diagonalize it. Okay. So. We're going to diagonalize it. Uh, how do we diagonalize A? Anybody remember? What's the first step? How do we diagonalize a matrix? Do you guys understand what this means, diagonalize A? Do you say? Do you write like A equals to PB negative inverse P? Or sorry, and A, times inverse P? A, A, P, P, B, B, inverse B. B. Okay. You want to find the P and the D. Okay. You need to find P and D. Now, D is diagonal matrix. Okay. P consists of diagonal vectors. Okay, so we have to find the eigenvectors. <coughs> How do I find the eigenvectors for this time? Okay, so find. Okay, we need to find eigenvectors. Okay, find eigenvectors. Okay, so we、we'll、determine a minus lambda i equal to zero. Determinant.、Uh, this guy minus lambda i minus lambda minus 1.5 minus lambda 0.5 one minus one minus lambda equal to zero minus 1.5 minus lambda minus one minus lambda. Just want to make sure everything is correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, subtract zero point five equal to zero. So you have lambda square. I can turn all this to positive in my head. Lambda square plus two point five lambda plus one point five minus zero point five equal to zero. Lambda square plus two point five lambda. One equal to zero. Is it okay? Yeah.、Uh, can you guys factorize this? 
Can someone factorize this for me? Is it hard? Because this is the decimals and so on. Two numbers multiplied together is one. Okay. Add together is 2.5. Anyone? Factorize this guy. Two numbers multiplied together is one. Uh, Add together is 2.5. Two and point five. Point five and two. Point five and two. Very good. Point five and two. Yes, which one I want first? I want to follow the same notation as I have. Okay. Point five and two. Then that will be equal to negative zero point five or negative two. Okay. okay. We have two eigenvalues. Okay, and they are distinct eigenvalues. Do we know whether we can diagonalize this? Would we have enough eigenvectors? On the eigen eigenvalue. Because the eigenvalues are distinct, right? Yeah. So we will have enough eigenvectors. The eigenvectors corresponding to this guy are going to be linearly independent because these two are distinct. Okay, so we need to find the eigenvectors. Okay. Okay, let's find the eigenvectors. Okay, eigenvectors. Lambda equal to negative zero point five. So what do I do? Uh, negative 0 0.5. Then this guy become negative 2, 0 0.5, 1, negative 1, negative 1, plus, okay, do I do it right? Uh, this is not minus 2. This is minus this one subtract negative 0 0.5 is at 0 0.5. Is it okay? Minus 1. Hmm. Minus 0 0.5. Okay. Are you guys with me? Yes. Yes. Okay. How about we have look at this? Yes. So V1. What's my V1? By staring at it, you know what V1 is. What's V1? Next, uh, X. X. Uh, X. X2 is going to be equal to X2. X1 is it going to be 0 0.5 X2. Is it okay? You guys follow it? Yes. 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 I am going to use one two instead. Okay. Just so that I don't have to deal with those decimals. Okay, so I got my V1. Let's get my V2 here. Lambda equal to negative two. Let's put the negative two there. This will be 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And this one will be one and one. Okay, so this will be one, one, zero, 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 zero. So V2 will be, what's V2? You guys are now able negative to- Negative one, one. Hey, Anna, very good, because you were surprised how I was able to stare it and figure it out last time, right? A couple of uh, weeks or so ago. Yeah. Now you can do it, now you can do it yourself. Yeah, I, I finally figured it out. 
Yeah, you figure it out. You can do it yourself. You can stare it and figure it out, which is very good. So matrix P, matrix P will be V1, V2, which is one, two, minus one, one. Okay. Okay. Now, what, are, are you guys still okay? Now what I know now is the following. I now know, okay, what is my matrix? What is the diagonal matrix D then? What is D? Oh, what about the diagonal entries? <laughs> what are the diagonal entries? The P is the eigenvectors. The diagonal entries of D is the uh, you know the answer, guys. <laughs> How do you no one's saying it though? Why is the eigenvalues? Eigenvalues. Eigenvalues. Very good, very good. Also, I put here. You have to be careful though, okay? Which one is which? This one corresponds to V1. And this zero point five. One is minus two. Okay. How do you know which one corresponds to which? The first column. This entry is for the first column. Correspond to V one. This is the second column. Correspond to V two. You cannot swap this. So because my okay negative zero point five, you get one two right. Okay. Okay. So this oh, oh okay. I okay, I see. All right, yeah. It's okay? Yeah. So now I have A is equal to P D D zero. Okay. Okay. Which is we just want to be more explicit then, okay? This is my D. This is my D. To be explicit. Okay. Now we are going to do a substitution. Okay. Here's the trick. So the original differential equation is this. Uh, you guys understand what this means, right? Well, I wrote it down earlier. It's the original. This is represent the original system of differential equation. You have x1 and x2 prime on the other left hand side. You have this other one on the right hand side. Is it okay? Is it all right? You guys understand what they say? Okay. Yes. Okay. All right, so good. So we are gonna use a substitution, okay? We have x, it's kind of like the substitution you did when you do math 252 uh, integral calculus. You do substitu use substitution and those things, but this is like a much more complicated substitution. X is equal to P times Y2, okay? Now uh, because X, if, so X prime here, so X prime T will be P times Y prime T. Okay, so this equation now become a new set of equation. Okay, now I'm gonna have a new set of equation. X prime T is P times Y prime T. P times Y prime T. It's equal to A. Okay, xt is p times y. Okay, are you still with me? 
you guys understand what I did? It's doing a substitution. It's kind of like you have the U substitution in math in 252. Okay. Now let's look at this. Now y prime t is going to be equal to p inverse a p y t. Okay. Now let's look at this. Let's look at that and see what that is. Now remember A is P, C, P inverse. Multiply both sides by P here. So this is A, P equal to P, C. Multiply by P inverse, P inverse A, P will be equal to the diagonal matrix D. So this one is just D, it's a diagonal matrix. This one is P now. Okay. And what you end up with is that y prime t is equal to d times y t. Now remember d is now a diagonal matrix. The diagonal matrix, the good thing about the diagonal matrix is that things are actually now decoupled. Oh, this one was a minus, sorry. <coughs> it's now decoupled now. So this is the same as saying that y1 t, y2 t is equal to minus 0 0.5, 0, 0, minus 2, y1 t, y2 t. Okay, so what do I have here? Uh, this has prime here, okay? So I have y1 prime t equal to negative 0 0.5 y1 t. And I have y2 prime t is equal to negative 2 y2 t. Now I can immediately write down the answer for y1 and y2 because now the system has been decoupled through that substitution. That substitution decoupled the system. Okay, and that's the beauty of diagonalization. The diagonalization makes this a diagonal matrix. Now the two things are not coupled together anymore. Okay, so my y t, my y one, of course my y one is going to be what? This is we talked about that earlier. This will be uh, c one e to the power. C1 e to the power, C1 e to the power minus 0 0.5 t, y2 t will be C2 e to the power negative 2 t. Is that okay? So I decoupled the system after a change of variable. So I end up with the solution for y1 and y2. Okay, so this is the solution for y1 and y2. So I end up with the solution for y1 and y2. Now from the solution to y1 and y2, I can get back, I can get back the solution for x1 and x2 because x is actually equal to this. Okay, so what I need to do is just uh, take so my x t is p times y t. What is my p? I forgot. One and two minus one and one. Is that right? That's my p, right? Yes. Times y one and y two. Okay. So that's my. That's my answer. Okay. So my this is my answer. You multiply this out, 
Okay, that's one way to modify it is always this. Are we okay? Uh, you need to notice that a couple of things, all right? These are the eigenvalues. These are eigenvalues. Lambda one, lambda two. These are the eigenvectors V1. And this one is V2. Okay. Of course, these are the constants. This C1 and C2 are the constant for the parameters. Okay. And this whole chunk of stuff. This whole chunk of stuff are called eigenfunctions. Okay, those those are the terminology. Uh, it's a lot of uh, questions before I start to make some more comments and do more examples. Can you just explain what we achieved by doing this? Like what was the goal in decoupling? Can you just explain that again? I cannot hear you well. Can you, can you repeat? Um, could you just explain what, what, we, what goal we achieved by doing this? Like the decoupling, what was the... What the goal is to solve the differential equation. So Luca, the goal is to solve the differential equation. The original differential equation is coupled together. It doesn't have this nice thing about this one, y1 prime and y1, y2 prime and y2. The original problem, uh, I erase it. That's the disadvantage of this small board. The original problem looked like this. Okay. And these are like inter mingle together, the x1 and x2. So the di diagonal brings in zeros that allow you to put the terms together alone. Yeah, the, the, the fact that you get into the di the fact that you get into the diagonal matrix is gonna help you. That is the diagonal matrix. Basically you decouple the system after you make the substitution. The diagonal matrix is decoupling it because now you don't have interaction. These two are zero. You don't have the interaction between the two. Okay, thanks. Does it help? Yes, that's good. Thank you. Because in the terminology, I mean, you are, or you already talked to, you, you, you talked the last semester, so you may not remember. Uh, we, we do it in a slightly different way, in a different manner, when in uh, 275. Some of you are taking 275, you probably remember how we do it. Um, the terminology is slightly different. Uh, we basically do elimination using differential operators. But this is another way. I just want to show you an application of this. Okay. Any other questions before we do another example? I also want to make a comment. Okay. I also want to make a comment based on this guy. Is on this guy here. You go to P times Y. 
okay? X equal to P times Y, this is the substitution that we did. What does it say about Y? Y is P inverse of X, okay? Y is just the X in a different coordinate system, okay? So this is changing the coordinate system multiplied by P inverse. So the base of this new coordinate system is my V1 and V2. Of course, in this case, it's my one, two, and negative one, okay? So you use this V1 and V2, the eigenvector is a new basis, okay? So when you do that, you do a change of coordinate system and writing this in the new basis, because the new basis now is aligning things up nicely, so the system becomes decoupled. And you can immediately write out the answer for this, okay? And then you go back to the X at the end, okay? You go back to the X at the end, and you have this as answer. Any other questions? I am going to write down the general result based on Eva. Oh, yeah. I just, how, how did the P inverse X become the X with the V? Become this? That's yeah. exactly what I did uh, right at the beginning of the lecture, right? I was trying to convince you that multiplied by P inverse X, this is the C1, C2 U set. You were the one who say that it's solving for the C1, C2. Uh, okay. Solving for the C1, C2 is P inverse of the X. You remember that? You said yeah. solving. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is changing the basis. It's getting back to what you asked me on Monday. You are, I was making some comment about change of basis and you were asking me to write it down and explain it more. I told you that we are going to get into that in this section. Okay, so this is the way that this is possible because we do a change of basis. The change of basis is actually through the substitution and you can see that this substitution is exactly changing the base. The X original is the, in the standard basis, right? in the standard basis, E1 and E2. Now we change it to a new basis, which use V1 and V2 by doing this substitution. Oh, okay. That substitution is a change of basis. Okay. Thank it's you. a little bit tricky. Hmm. Because there's an entire section on section 5.4 about change of basis, which I didn't really want to get into. But this is essentially what happened. So we are actually changing the basis to decouple the system. So I am, oh, yes I do. Uh, why don't I show you one picture here? I'm gonna share my, my screen and show you one picture. Okay. I'm gonna show you a picture. Are you guys seeing my screen now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So these are the trajectories. Okay. You can see that I don't have to step aside. Okay, I'm sharing the screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I was going to step aside. Okay, so you see that V1 and V2? Okay, those are the eigenvectors. Okay. Now, basically what happened is that a trajectory means that you're following the flow. Okay, so this axis, this is X, uh, those are the 
x1 and x2 axis okay as time move then these guys just move okay when time move it's just going along these different curves the different curves different curves correspond to different values of c1 and c2 are you guys with me yes so this is called an attractor because both eigenvalues are negative because the eigenvalues are negative okay so this v1 here you see v1 and v2 okay the derivative is going to be in negative 0 0.5 and negative 2 right so that's the derivative times the v1 v2 so those eigenvalues tell you whether you are going away from the origin or going towards the origin in this case both of them are negative both of them are going towards the origin so this is an attractor okay or sink s-i-n-k sink okay so as time goes to infinity all these things are go to zero all these paths no matter what path you take you are going to go to zero as time goes to infinity can you see that from this picture now from the equation you can also see the same thing uh i'm going to un any other question about the picture first i'm going to show you the the equation also show you the same thing what are the curvy lines again this each curvy line is called a trajectory just think about this differential equation represents some system okay you have some particles starting from some point let's say here if the starting point is here as time goes on it's going to follow this and you eventually end up here if you start somewhere there it follow this and you eventually end up here if you start over here okay it's kind of like the direction field in, that you learn in calculus too oh so are these for for different um a different initial condition this is the a we are talking about this is the, the this corresponds to the example we just did okay a, each curve is for different c1 c2 there are other curves oh, here you, oh. if you start if you start here you will be something like that okay it's just that you they cannot draw an infinite number of curves i mean so they draw a finite number but there are actually infinite number of them it basically tell you what happened to x1 and x2 as time change it's called a dynamical system it's in fact similar to markov chain in some sense both of them are dynamical system markov chain is discrete dynamical system this one is continuous dynamical system so c1 and c2 will dictate which path which curve you're taking okay so if you put a if you start off from this point and wait okay then eventually we'll go into here okay i'm going to unshare the screen how do i do that okay stop sharing okay uh from the solution look at this as t goes to infinity what happened <coughs> As t goes to infinity, can you see that this guy goes to zero? The whole thing yeah. goes to zero. Yes. This whole thing goes to zero. Yes. Okay, good. So that's why the picture. Everything gets sucked into the sink, which is the origin. Everything gets sucked into the origin. Any other question? It's interesting stuff. I mean, it's an application of what we have. Just learn. I'm going to write down the general result, okay? The general result really just come from, just come from this example. I mean, we illustrate the whole thing already, okay? I am going to erase. I am going to erase.
Okay. Uh, so that's the general result. I mean, it's exactly what we did earlier. Okay. Any questions? I mean, you follow the procedure we did earlier, you will end up with this result, basically. As long as uh, you need to have enough eigenvectors though, okay? So the, the matrix A has to be diagonalizable. If A has, that means A is, Can I do another example to illustrate this result? Yes, please. Okay, let me know when you're ready. Uh, now, the particle position vector, position vector is x1, x2, okay? Position vector, you have x1, x2. So this is the initial position somewhere here, 2.9, 2.6, somewhere here. That's the initial position. And under this differential equation, Okay, it's going to cause it to move. It's going to cause it to move. Trace out some trajectory. Okay, we want to find out what that trajectory is. Okay. So what we are saying is that all you need to do is to diagonalize the system. Essentially, you just find out what the eigenvalues and eigenvectors are. <coughs> So all you need to do is find out eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So for this example, uh, I'm not going to have enough time to just comp or do all the computation, okay? I'm going to just say that the eigenvalues are 
6 and minus 1. So lambda 1 is 6, lambda 2 is minus 1. The corresponding V1 is minus 5, 2. And V2 is going to be 1, 1. I mean, this part, I mean, we have done this so many times. Okay? You guys know how to do it, I hope. So what is the answer? The answer is xt equal to c1. Multiply by these eigenfunctions. These are the eigenfunctions. c1 e to the power 6t, and then the eigenvector c2 e to the power negative t, and then the eigenvector. Is it okay? So I have a question. I think you, uh, I think we two should be e we one. What? Uh, maybe this one is x zero. Uh, say, say it again. Uh, v one is six. Yeah, if we one six, then we uh, yeah yeah. If lambda equals to six, we one is not equal to negative five and two. It's not. It's the other way. Yeah. No, it is. Really? You can check. You can check on the matrix. Okay. So the matrix matrix is four negative five negative two and one. Okay, let's check that. Let's multiply this by v one. I can be wrong though. You can be right. I don't know. What is this? Negative thirty. And this is twelve. It is going to be it's six times of this. Okay. Is it okay? Okay, my bad. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. No problem. No problem. It's good that you are engaged in this. It's okay. So it is correct. So this is essentially the answer. So of course, this one is actually x one t and x two t. Okay. But. Here they give you the initial. Oh, by the way, by the way, uh, is this going to be like a a sink or a, what's it called, uh, an attractor? Are both of these negative? No. One of them is positive. One of them is negative. And that is called a. So we end up with a saddle form. When one of them is a negative, one of them is positive. So in one direction it is attracting inside, the other direction is repelling. Okay. So if both, if all lambdas positive, then it's called a repeller or source. All lambdas negative is called a attractor. Or sink. Uh, some positive, some negative. It's going to be called set of form. Okay. These are terminology for dynamical systems. Uh, we are not completely done with this because this is an initial value problem. We are given this at time zero. Those are the values. Uh, and you need to compute, you need to base on this information to compute, uh, to compute C1 and C2, okay? So when T is equal to zero, okay? X1, X2 is equal to 2.9, 2.6. So you end up with, you end up with this. <coughs> 2 for 9, 2 for 6. Just sub put it into here. Okay. X u, t equal to 0. And t equal to 0, this is 1. So it's c1 minus 5, 2 plus c2, 1, 1. Okay. C1 
So this is can be written as minus five two one one times C one C two. The C one C two would be equal to this guy. Okay, and that's your C1, C2, and then you have to plug it back in. They say, okay. You guys saw what I did at the end? Do you want me to, want to really to continue with this, or you guys know what to do? Do I need to continue? Go ahead and continue. Go ahead and continue. Compute the inverse. Computing the inverse is one minus five, minus one minus two, two point nine, two point six, one over the determinant. Determinant is minus seven. Okay. I will solve here, how about that? And then let's solve C one, C two. Okay. Or you can instead of computing the inverse, you can solve, you can do RLEF to solve this. Okay, you can just put this into a momentum matrix and RLEF. Yeah. Either way it will work. Okay, we have a little bit of time left. You guys can ask questions. We did a lot today. So what is so what is the final answer or the final answer? Yeah. Okay. Can somebody help me? Or do you guys want to help me? Uh zero point three. What is this? Uh minus five point eight minus thirteen. Minus eighteen point eight. I may I may be making mistakes, but I hope not. Okay, okay. I try my best. So this one it would be negative zero point three over seven, one point eighteen point eight over seven, and those are your C one and C two. The final answer is this guy. It is replaced by negative 0 0.3 over 7, and this guy replaced by 18.8 over 7. Okay. You okay? Yeah. yeah. That is the final answer. Okay. Assuming I didn't make any uh, right. calculation errors. Yeah. yeah. But essentially, on a test, we would need to write out the formula yeah, at the end you have to put this, you have to actually compute it, put it back in and write out. Right, right. Okay, that's so, what I wanted to make sure. Yeah, I'm just kind of somewhat lazy. We actually finished this section. We did a lot today. Any question? Are you guys overwhelmed? Oh, it's just so easy. I just need practice, I think. Okay. Yeah, you can go ahead and do the homework, okay? If we finish this already. Yeah, make sure you do the homework. I think it's interesting to see how this diagonalization is being used. It's used all over the place. This is one example. So this is gonna be on the midterm next week? Uh, it's included in the study guide, yeah. Okay. yeah. Potentially on the midterm. So on Monday next week, we can probably go to chapter six, unless you guys have a lot of questions want to do review or things like that, it's up to you guys. Okay. But chapter six is not going to be on the midterm. Oh, I did I tell you that I need to tell you this. 
the midterm, the midterm is going to be a little bit long. Did I mention this? It's relatively long for the time, amount of time allocated. I haven't mentioned this yet. I haven't mentioned this yet? No. Okay. Uh, don't worry about it too much. If you can't finish it, just do your best. Do the easy one first. I'm going to curve it. Okay. The reason for me for doing this is not because I like to create a lot of problems. It's because if I have if I make it long compared with the amount of time allocated, then the chance of collaboration is lower. If you have so much time, then you can just keep texting each other and sending pictures back and forth. You guys understand where I'm coming from? Yeah. I want you to be too busy trying to figure it out that you don't have time to talk to each other. Okay. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll all be in one Zoom call, taking the test together. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> so oh, it's the honor system. It's an honor system. I mean, so don't get too worried, okay? If you cannot finish it, finish the easy one first. Choose the one that you can do. All the problems, there are 10 problems. They are all equally weighted. Some of them are much easier than the other, okay? So like, how aggressive is this curve? Are we talking? Well, uh, because I, it's I, not I, until we take it. How about, how about I'll make sure there is somebody who get 100%. If the top of the class is 80, I'll add 20. <laughs> okay, deal. Is it okay? I will Fair make enough. sure that there will be at least one person who get 100%. Okay? But in the, by doing it this way, I actually have a way to actually figure out. I mean, it's a good way to actually, it's, it's more fair, I think. It's more fair. Because otherwise, I mean, everybody, I mean, people who don't co collaborate would not do well. People who collaborate would do better. I'm just trying my best to make it more fair. Okay. I, yeah, I think I'm in shock. I, I understandable. That. I hope you're not in shock. <laughs> no, it's a big okay from me, Chief. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's the way that I'm gonna do it because that's the only way to make it as fair as possible. Okay. The other way is to have everybody log in with the webcam, and I just watch you guys. If you turn your head, then I assume you are cheating. So, but some people don't have webcams, so I can't do that. So, so this is what I'm going to do. Okay. So don't feel, don't, don't get too, don't get too, too freaked out. Okay. If you, if you don't do it as well as you want, there will be a curve. Okay. I'll, I'll make sure that at least one person get a hundred percent. How about that? Okay. Okay. So, you, so this is a corollary to this. If you help somebody else, if you help somebody else, in fact, it can potentially hurt yourself because the person is going to get higher. Okay. If the person is already at 80, you help him and he get 90, then everybody get at most 10. So don't help other people. Is it possible to actually finish then? Or are you telling us like it's not, it's too much? You may not be able to finish it. I don't know. I mean, I, I expect some some students may be able to finish it. Depends on how fast you can walk. It's 10 questions. All right. Yeah. Okay. Some of them are short, some of them are longer. But I just want to let you know, don't, don't be extremely concerned and so on, okay? <laughs> there will be a curve. I'll get zero if everyone else agrees. <laughs> Say that again, Luca. I'll get zero if everyone else agrees. Bro, everybody don't tell the professor. No, so, like, yeah, if everybody gets zero, then everybody get a hundred. There we go. Okay. You guys can all agree on getting all zero. I don't have to grade. Okay. Personally, I'm more just surprised that the CSM district hasn't announced that we'd be going to pass or fail yet because I feel like trying to do like letter grades in these circumstances is like nigh impossible because it's so easy to cheat. Right. But I think I think you have a I mean I 
okay, this is my understanding. I'm not 100% sure, but I think we are leaning towards. They're not going to force you to do PMP, but I think you can get a do PMP very late. So if like, I believe, I mean, don't, don't call me on this, okay? I think, they, I'm sure they will communicate to you. So if like three days before the final or one day before the final, you want PMP, you probably can still do it. But you need to talk to your counselor first because there may be implications on this. Some of the UCs are really bad, they are terrible. They want you to still have grade. And the uses of different uses as different requirements. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah. it's kind of very hard. So if you feel that you don't mind doing PMP, just go doing PMP now, it's fine. But talk to a counselor and see what the implication is. So I think there's use, but the PMP deadline is probably over by now, right? If it wasn't for the for this virus stuff. But I think you can still do it. Or gotcha. they, they are also talking about something called emergency withdrawal. That means even after the withdrawal deadline, you can do a something called instead of a W, it's called EW, emergency withdrawal. So you have you guys get any communication on this? No. 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 I check my CSM email every day. Or yeah, no, nothing whatever. about pass, no pass, nothing like that. Okay. <laughs> but I think they they have been talking about it. I was in some of the call, but I think they're leaning towards. Just letting you do PMP anytime. I mean, so I don't know about after the final letter, you can still do it, but I mean, certainly before the final, you can do it. I believe that there was a uh, system wide uh, withdrawal email sent out, I believe, a week or two ago. Oh, really? I believe so. I would have to check, look for it, but um, I think it was sent directly from the district versus uh, the school. To the students or to the staff? Are you receiving it as a student or as a staff? That is a great question. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> because you are both. <laughs> yeah. Well, I check my emails every day as a student and I received no such thing, so probably staff. Okay, I'll, I'll look for it and look for the title and then post it here if I, if I didn't. Yeah, I'll look for it and see what I can do. Okay. Yeah, so I know that everybody is freaked out about this. I mean, so, uh, but there are the implications though, right? So people are concerned that, okay, so maybe even if the UCs or the CSU say it's okay, uh, then how about if you plan to go to graduate school? I mean, would it be, would you get hurt or not? I have a question about the midterm. Yeah. So are we all going to do it individually during the time we usually have class next yeah. week? And yeah. then the due date, like we have to submit it by the end of class? You have to, yes. Okay, everybody, I mean, I, I mentioned this in the email, I, in the announcement I sent out, please make sure you do that. It starts at 12.45. Okay, on Wednesday, and it ends at 2.15. So by 2.15, you have to take pictures of what you have done and submit it. After that, you cannot submit it anymore. Is that clear for everyone? Right. So the way I interpret that is you finish at 2.10, and then you, you make sure you have the five minutes to upload it. Yeah, whatever it takes you to take pictures. Yeah. Okay. And you're gonna are you, you're gonna email us the test and then we print it out. Uh, it's gonna be you open it, go to Canvas, click on assignment, and then you will see the test. I currently have a trial test there for you guys to try out, but about eight of you actually try it. The other, the other twenty didn't try, but that's okay. It will appear on that day as long as you know how to take picture and submit it. That will be fine. But it need to be done by two fifteen. Everybody is working on it at the same time. It's not like 
once you look at it, you have 90 minutes and you just flexibility and when you want to do it. Is everybody doing it at the same time? At okay. And do you want us to print the test and write on it or like? You don't need to print the test. Just say that number one, question number one, number okay. one, this, this is the answer. To, you need to show work also, right? Okay. Not just the answer, show work. Question number one, question number two, question number 10. Okay. As a PDF file or pictures, pictures also well. Some of you try it already and it seems to well. And you can use calculators. You can, it's, it's open book and open notes. Okay. It's open book and open notes. Just no collaboration. Uh, somebody asked whether Monday will be reviewing. We, I can, if so, it's up to you guys. We can review on Monday if you want. Do you guys want to review on Monday or section 6.1? Review. Okay. So you can, you need to start to study guys. So any other questions about the material, about the test? So it will be a little bit challenging, okay, the test, but it's open book, it's not just a card or three by five, open book and open notes. So in that sense, it makes it easier. Okay, that's it then guys, okay. Have a good weekend. Bye, Professor. Okay, bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. See you, Professor. Bye.